curious about what is happening behind the scenes on the self-hosted runner? Let's dive into some of the folders and files and see if we can figure out exactly what is going on. Hey y'all, I'm Mickey Gousset, and today we are looking at what is happening on the self-hosted runner when it executes a workflow job. In particular, we are going to investigate two folders. The underscore diag folder, which contains diagnostic information, and the underscore work folder, which contains all the files related to the workflow job run. Now, let's dive in and see what we can learn. Let's dive into what might actually be happening on the self-hosted runner itself. Okay, so if we are in our repo and we're going to kick off this workflow, well first, our runner is not running. So let's start the runner up, run.sh. We can see that the current the runner has started running and is listing for jobs. Now, over here, we are in the actions runner folder where we installed everything. And if you'll remember, we've got two folders in there that we might really care about. One's the work folder, one's the diagnostic folder. Let's go into the diagnostic folder first. So you can see in the diagnostic folder, we have runner logs and we have worker logs. The runner logs are related to when we're starting and stopping the runner. The worker logs are related to actually when a, when a workflow or a specific job runs. So if we just do a list of the runner logs, then we can see here's the latest runner log that we just started up. Now, there's probably a whole bunch of stuff in here that's not going to necessarily make a lot of sense to us, but you know, we could try to look at the log if we really wanted to. And here's all the stuff that's happening when we when we did that run.sh command. This is all the stuff that it's doing to get everything set up for us. So now let's actually kick off a workflow. This workflow is about to be kicked off. You can see it's running the job. And now if we go back, if we go into, oh, I didn't mean to switch folders. But now if we do a, a look, we can see that we now have a third worker log. So this is tracking the log information related to this particular workflow run. And I need to check. And that's something, you know what, we'll test that in a future um, video. Is this showing just the job or is it showing the workflow run? It's actually probably just showing the job because remember each job in a workflow file run, can run on its own runner. But we can test that to find out for sure. But if we do a quick look at this log file Actually, let's open it up in BI, which, you know. This is all the stuff that's going on in the file to, or in the runner to process that job. Now, one of the things I thought was interesting is it takes my simple.yaml workflow file and it looks like it's actually breaking it out into um, JSON to then be able to process. So I found that found that kind of interesting. So if you want to dive into these files to, to really understand what it's doing when it's trying to when it's processing your job, this is where you would go. These files I think could be helpful potentially if 
a workflow is not performing the way you expect it to, or your runner is not performing the way you expect it to. But this is where you can um, view diagnostic information related to your runners or the jobs that are running on those runners. The same token, if we move back a folder and we go into the work folder, this is where it does all the actual work, such as checking out the code or downloading and storing the actions. Every job, if you have a job that's using an action, that action code has to be downloaded to the runner before it can run it. So you can see we have this folder called act underscore actions. And in that folder, we have one other folder called actions. And then a folder called checkout. And then a folder called V2. And then we have all of the code related to the V2 version of the actions checkout action, which is what we used in our workflow file. So if we come back over to our workflow file, we are using the actions checkout V2 action. So when you're any anytime any action you're using, it's going to try to download that action to the runner. It's going to put it in this underscore actions folder, and then it's going to path it out via owner, repo name, and version that you're using. I found that pretty interesting. Let's see what's in the. If there's anything in the pipeline. Let's see. I haven't explored this one before. Pipeline folder.json. Oh, let's cat that. See if there's any what we got in there. So that's just showing the repository we're using. Um I'm not sure exactly what we get out of that as far as what useful information, but it's there. Then obviously we have this temp folder and this tool folder, which I'm not sure what they're used for. But the workflows private folder, if I do an ls of that, then you can see there's a workflows private folder. Then in there is the workflows private repo that was checked out by that checkout action. And then we can see in that repo is the readme. Now, what you've probably picked up on by doing this dive into the work folder is it didn't clean up after itself. This isn't like a hosted runner where you know it's going to spin it up, it's going to run, and then it's going to tear it down. All of the code that we checked out is still there. So you're going to have to figure out a way if you want to keep your runners pristine, you're going to have to figure out a way on how you're going to clean them up after a workflow runs or before a workflow runs to ensure that leftover artifacts or leftover code doesn't mess something up in the future. I hope you've enjoyed this video on what is happening behind the scenes on the self-hosted runners. If so, please comment and like this video, subscribe to my channel, and smash that bell to be notified of my next video. Thanks for watching!